Well, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Westbury Church of Christ's amazing Bible study. We're looking at miracles, and uh, and you know there are times in life when when uh, when we really need more than what what we've got in us to do stuff. Now, last week I asked you if you if you still believe that if you believe that miracles still happen, and or a couple of weeks ago, and you told me, yeah. You did that every time a baby's born, that's a miracle. Amen. Uh, every time, um, every time a uh, uh, every time somebody's baptized into Christ, uh, then there's a miracle because they go from being lost to being found. We're tonight. We're we're looking at. We're finishing up uh, uh, looking on a miracle that happened out in the middle of the stormy night. Ah, best ghost stories are. It was a dark and stormy night. And so here you have these situations where it is a dark and stormy night. Let's read Matthew chapter 14, 22 through 36. It says, immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against him. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus reached out and said, immediately. Let's just go back to that word for just a second. Because you see, when I'm where I'm not supposed to be doing what I'm not supposed to do. Because that's, that's where Peter was. He was, he was where he was. He was where he wasn't supposed to be doing what he wasn't supposed to do. Uh, you know, he wasn't supposed to be out of the boat. Jesus said, come on. But he, you know, nobody but Jesus and, and I guess Peter at that point had ever walked outside of the boat. It's not a smart thing to do. And so he, and he was doing what he wasn't supposed to be doing. In his case, he was walking on the water. Um, and so and so I think what I want to get out of this is that uh, that. We can trust our God uh, through absolutely everything, even when we're not supposed to be, uh, even, excuse me, even when we're not supposed to be doing what we're not supposed to do. God is still faithful to us. All right, that was immediately, okay? Jesus reached, by the way, I, I would have wanted to have made him suffer a little bit, drowned, get a little water in his lungs, and so he wouldn't do it again. Uh, and so immediately, Jesus said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down, and those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And when they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret. And, the, and, and when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to the surrounding country, and people brought all kinds of sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak, and all who touched were healed. Um Pretty amazing miracle, isn't it? And uh, that uh, that that uh, we're reading about here. Here we have uh, Jesus that, that and we, we ascertained last week that that uh, that this was a, this, this storm was a situation where they were in trouble for doing exactly what Jesus told them to do. You know, he he, he they went out. He told them, "You get on the, you get in the boat and go to the other side." And, and they said, uh, okay, and then a storm blew up. I, I think Jesus knew there was going to be a storm. But, but you know, so, so sometimes we concluded that sometimes uh, we get into trouble and we're, do, and we're exactly where God wants us to be. We're doing exactly what God wants us to do. And if we can look at that as, okay, disappointment is his appointment, then we can, then we can make it, through that storm. Second lifesaver is uh, the Lord is praying for us. I love the thought of Jesus going to often withdrawing to lonely places for the purpose of prayer. <clears throat> because prayer is not one of those things you can do in a big crowd. 
Now, you can say a prayer, but I'm talking about really, really, really pray. And, and, and there's Jesus, and he's, he's on the side of the mountain, and he's watching them do fight through this incredible storm, and he prays for them. Uh, the disciples liked that Jesus prayed for them because his prayers usually got answered. And, uh, and, and so, and so that, that the Lord prays for us to this day. We, he intercedes on our behalf to this day. He says, well, I don't know where I got that certain sudden burst of energy. I do. You offered a petition to the Lord, and he strengthened you, which let's go to lifesaver number three, and that is the Lord will come to us. I, I mean, I know God is with us, okay? That is not in doubt. But sometimes we need a little bit more than those words. And so our Lord comes to us in a special way and reveals his glory when we need it the most. When the storm was at its fiercest and the night was at its darkest, Jesus came up to them <coughs> and he's walking on the water. And the waves that had made them fear for survival uh, were just stair steps for Jesus to use for his rescue. Uh, let me give you a good verse to remember when the storm of life hits you. Uh, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. I want you to notice none of this says if, okay? None of this says, you know, perhaps. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, I will be with you. They will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Okay, the issue is an if, the issue is when. And as we walk through this picture album that God's given us, we can meet a lot of people who knew exactly what it meant to have the assurance of the presence of the Lord during their time through the storms of pain and difficulty. The Lord was with Joseph in Egypt. He was with Joshua in Jericho. He walked in a furnace and three faithful men and stood in the lion's den with Daniel. He stood up for Paul in Rome when everybody else had abandoned him. And we see that and we read that. But the truth is, we don't always recognize Jesus when he shows up. Let's go back out to that storm on that boat. They saw Jesus on the waves and they didn't go, oh, oh, that's Jesus. No, they went, oh, we got a ghost. Let's go back to the best ghost stories. It was a dark and stormy night. There, it needs to be a dark and stormy night. And there always needs to be the presence of a, boat, a, a booger, a haint, a ghost. There always needs to be the presence. When we got one, he says, he says listen, uh, We've got, look out there, the last thing we need right now is a visit from the world of the dead. Let me give you something interesting here, okay? You read Mark's account of this night, and he'll tell you that Jesus was about to walk on past them, that they had to holler for him to get his attention. Now, if Jesus came to save them from this storm, why did he walk past them? You know, was he waiting for them to recognize him before he would help? Was he testing their faith? Is it a mistranslation? I've studied it seven or eight different ways, and I'll give you my conclusion right now. I ain't got a clue. I have no idea. I do know one thing, that the sound of his voice and the assurance of his word gave, him, gave them the confidence they needed to make it through. And those same words can give us the same confidence when we find ourselves in the middle of life's storms. It will be interesting when we go to the other side and are able to see things in, in all the dimensions. All the times that I was going through tough times and Jesus stood beside me and I didn't recognize him. Lifesaver number four, the Lord will help us grow. Peter says in 2 Peter 3.18, to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Weather reports may make us look smart. Okay, we looked at weather report. We had an eclipse yesterday, and if you're in Houston, it was a dud. Okay, it looked like a, it looked like a dark cloud blew in and, and hung around for an hour, threatening rain, and, and, and then it moved on off. All right, there are some other places close to here, Austin. Man, it was gorgeous. It was beautiful. So, Knowing when those things happen, that may make us look smart, but nothing grows us up like a storm. 1 Peter 5.10 And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, 
After you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Let me give you an interesting point here, okay? Peter was a fisherman. And of, and of all things that God used to grow him up, it had to do with nets and boats and storms and seas. The first time was when Jesus had Peter pull his boat out of the port so he could use it to preach from. And then the little lesson with the nets. Peter, what did you learn from that? Peter says, I learned that I can trust Jesus to care for me on the clear sunny days. Then the storm where Jesus was asleep in the boat. Okay, Peter, what did you learn out of that? Well, I've learned that I can trust Jesus at night and uh, in a storm when Jesus isn't in the boat. Well, Peter, is that all you learned? No, 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 it's not all I learned. Because I asked Jesus if I could walk on the water with him. And Jesus looked at me and said, come. And on the strength of that one word, I did the impossible. So I've learned you that you can depend on Jesus even when there's no boat. Now, I can hear your brains thinking, okay? You're thinking, well, he sunk. Yes, he did. I will give you that. But he knew he was sinking. And he had the faith to cry out to Jesus for help. I'm going to tell you what. None of the other people that were there that night got wet, only Peter. And the reason that they got didn't get wet was that their faith wasn't such that they were, that they were willing to get out of the boat. You know, before, now, before we do any criticizing for, okay, those guys didn't have much faith to say they'd just seen what they did, let's take a good look at us, all right? Let's take a good look at, at who we are and uh, and and examine our own faith and courage. See, it was Peter's love for Jesus that drew him out of the boat to be with the master. It was Peter's faith in Jesus that made him uh, free, that kept him from, from, drown, from drowning. Uh, it, it, Peter dared to be different, and that's the kind of follower Jesus just loves. Peter started sinking when he realized where he was and the fact that he wasn't supposed to be there, and he stopped paying attention to Jesus, and he started paying attention to the water. Now listen, I've done that a lot of times. I think that by now, I'd learned that I cannot successfully walk on the waves or even run the race unless my faith is to the point where I can fix my eyes on Jesus. I let circumstances stop me. Circumstances are those things we, we see when we notice that we're where, where we are, where we're not supposed to be in matters of God, and we try to make some sense out of it instead of just sticking to his promises. So Peter starts sinking, and he screams, and immediately Jesus picks him up. I always thought that was kind of the end of the water walking thing. But Jesus and Peter went ahead and walked on back to the boat together, which brings us to life saver, saver number five, and that is the Lord will see us through. It must have been an interesting day at work if you were in, uh, if you if you followed Jesus, if you were in his group, because they'd seen the feeding of the 5,000. They'd seen Jesus walking on the water. They'd seen Peter walking on the water. Then they've seen Peter being rescued and Jesus and Peter walking back to the boat. But there were two more things to come because when Jesus got into the boat, the storm stopped immediately as in just quit that was miracle number one miracle number two was they miraculously arrived at their destination you know jesus had gone from what kind of man are you to truly you are the son of god and hebrews 12 uh, 2 jesus is called the author and the finisher of our faith and here's what that means that means whatever jesus starts jesus finishes abraham was not a perfect man but God kept his promises to him and he fulfilled his promises in him and through him because he walked with him. Walking by faith isn't easy. In fact, probably one of the hardest things I've ever tried to, to, to do and I've not got it done yet. I do know that even though it's difficult, it's a whole lot better, better than living a life of doubt and unbelief. Look at Philippians 1.6, being confident of that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. I, I'm going to proclaim a preacher's license and close out with a poem. I'm, I'm not necessarily a poem guy, all right? I like this one. It says, Be gone, unbelief, my Savior is near. 
and for my relief will surely appear. By prayer, let me wrestle, and he will perform. With Christ in the vessel, I will smile at the storm. Let's pray. Our Father, we come to you right now. Father, thanking you for being for us, being there for us in the storms of life. Father, we have people that are going through all kinds of different storms right now. We've got some folks that are in some health storms. We've got some folks that are in some marriage storms. We've got some folks that are that are in educational storms. We've got Father, we've got storms all around us. And we ask that you help us navigate our way through that so that the end of our walk through this earth, we see your kingdom with its power and its glory forever and ever. Amen. Bye now. Have a good week, okay?